pick a blade. Any blade. Ow! Dang gum it that is sharp. Let's talk about table saw blades. So it has come time to replace or think about replacing your table saw blade. And if you've done any amount of shopping, you will know there are a ton of different options available. So many options that it's kind of difficult to make the decision of which one you should get. Fear not, I'm here to help. One thing you will learn as a woodworker that it's important to keep a sharp or a new blade on your table saw. When that table saw blade gets dull, it is absolutely disastrous for your workpiece. Either dull or you're using the wrong blade entirely. Have you ever been pushing wood through the table saw blade and it's not going or it's making them black burnt marks? There are ways to fix that. There are ways to avoid that. And some of that is what we want to talk about in this video. The timely change or sharpening of your table saw blade is absolutely essential both for safety and for the preservation of the work piece. You don't want to damage the work piece especially due to your negligence of your blade. So it is time to change the blade. What do we get? So when selecting a blade you first have to figure out what type of cutting you're actually going to be doing. Rip cutting or cross cutting. Just so you know, rip cutting is cutting along the grain, with the grain. Cross cutting is cutting across the grain. Doesn't sound like a big deal, but it makes a huge difference when selecting a table saw blade. Let's talk about the boring stuff first, and then I'll get into what blade you actually need. So, a saw blade is made of a few different parts, believe it or not. The main body of the part is called the steel plate. Throughout this steel plate, you'll notice there are different kinds of cuts different kinds of little grooves, stuff like that. This is to help prevent as much vibration as possible and to help the blade run smoother through the work piece. It also helps to reduce noise. Can you see it? So on the blade, you will notice that every blade has carbide metal teeth. The more expensive blades have larger and thicker teeth, which can be sharpened multiple times. The least or less expensive blades have smaller carbide teeth, which don't really sharpen too well. You kind of get what you pay for. So the space between the teeth is called the gullet, and this helps to remove the chips and waste material throughout the cut. Ripping blades, what you'll notice, have fewer teeth and deeper gullets, while cross-cutting blades have more teeth and shallower gullet. Ripping blade, cross-cutting blade. You got a deeper gullet, less teeth. Shallow gullet, more teeth. I'm not a scientist, I didn't design it. I just know what to look for now. So I wanna get through the anatomy of the blade before we get on, I'm gonna keep going. Arbor hole, thickness of the blade is called your kerf thickness. This is the gap that it's gonna make in the wood when it makes the cut. You'll most likely be dealing with a 1 8 inch kerf if you're just gonna buy your typical generic run of the mill table saw blade. All that being said, the anatomy is explained of the table saw blade. Let's talk about the different types of teeth. One type of tooth is the flat top grind tooth, or FTG. This tooth has a flat top on it. It holds its edge pretty well. And these are really good for ripping material. The next type of tooth we're gonna talk about is the triple chip grind, or TCG tooth. And these teeth are ground down on the corners, which lessens the opportunity for kerf marks. TCG teeth are found on glue line rip blades, which provide a very good finish, especially where you're gonna have a glue line. And these blades will often add an FTG, flat top grind, in the mix of the blade to help with the ripping. The next type of teeth we're gonna talk about is the alternate top bevel, or ATB teeth. These are typically found on cross-cutting blades. And these teeth are beveled in opposite directions. They make for a much cleaner cut on cross-cutting material. And remember, the steeper the bevel, the cleaner the cut. And so next you have your high angle ATB blade. And these blades have a very, very steep angle. They make for a very, very clean, fine cut because the angles come together for a fine point. And these blades are ideal for making cabinets. They're ideal for cutting through veneer grade or finished grade plywood because they leave a very, very, very clean cut. However, they dull way more quickly than any other type of blade. So it's important you use this blade only for ripping plywood if you're doing cabinets or something like that, that really needs that really fine finish. So if you get a high angle ATB blade, I would not use it on anything except for finished plywood or veneer finished wood. If I'm building something that's gonna be exposed to the eye. 
If I'm not using it for that, I'm not having that blade on my saw. I've actually never owned one myself, but it's there, it's available. So the last two types we're gonna talk about, then we'll kind of move on to what you probably really need to know is the combination or general purpose type blade. These have a combination of all the different types of teeth. And that's so you could use this for ripping, for cross cutting, whatever you gotta do. These general purpose blades are probably ideal for most beginner woodworkers. Obviously, it's not gonna do rip cutting as well as a rip cutting blade would do. It's not gonna do cross cutting as well as a cross cutting blade will do. But it is a good alternative if you don't really know what you're gonna be doing, or if you just want a good all around blade to get started, a general purpose or a combination blade is the answer you're looking for. The manufacturers typically recommend what the blade is for. If you look on the case, especially if you find the ones in the big box stores, you look on the case of it, it'll kind of show you a picture of what it's for. It'll tell you that it's for ripping, or it's for cross cutting, or it's for plywood, things like that. I personally have about five different table saw blades. If you're just starting out or you're a beginner, you don't have to have that many blades. I have found that leaving a rip saw blade on my table saw works pretty well because I rip a lot of lumber. I also cross cut a lot of lumber, but if I keep that blade sharp or new, it gives me a good clean cut. So all of that information is just, if it helps you, that's awesome. But the main thing you need to know, the less teeth it has, that's better for ripping cut, rip. A real easy rule of thumb is go low tooth count for rip cutting, high tooth count for cross cutting. 24 tooth to 40 tooth is what I use for my rip cutting. And that's honestly what I keep on my table saw most of the time. And in terms of expense, just buy what you can afford. If you can afford the nicer blade made by Forrest, I've had one of those, they're very nice. I actually destroyed it. I hit a couple nails while rip cutting a big cypress mantle. That was on me. But Forrest makes a really nice blade. It's like 135 bucks, I believe, but you get a lifetime supply of sharpening. You send in a the blade, they sharpen it and send it back. If you can afford it, that's awesome. The Diablo blades, the red blades that I use, they work just fine. If you can't afford those, go a step down, that's fine. It's all about getting what works for you inside of your budget. I just recorded like 10 minutes of stuff and never hit the record button. The moment we've all been waiting for for the fifth time, Domino Joiner giveaway. So, if you submitted an email at my website, if you submitted it to my email address, I got it. I read it. I read every single one of them. There's a common factor between all of them, or almost all of them, that's a lot of people are struggling. A lot of people are struggling to make ends meet. Woodworking is really what's being used for side income, extra income, stuff like that. If I could give everybody a whole shop, I certainly would. But I hope you understand I had to pick somebody to get one domino joiner and one laser engraver. That being said, the domino joiner is going to go to Dustin Little in Georgia. I will get with you, I will contact you, and ship this over to you. Congratulations, Dustin Little. Oh, sorry, I'm shaking the table. Congratulations, Dustin. It's a great tool to have. I really hope it improves your business. The Ortor Laser Master 3 Pro Laser Engraver and Enclosure. A lot of people have interest in this one. Like I said, I have to pick one person. This is going to go to Brian.Beverly4868. Congratulations, Brian. Now, if you didn't get anything, if it was up to me, I would give everybody everything I possibly could. I just don't have that kind of resource. Right now, we are working on building a shop. We're actually breaking ground tomorrow. I'm gonna to try to record as much of that process as I can without creeping these guys out. But tomorrow, we're gonna to start the dirt work. Next week, we're gonna do the slab. Week after, or the following weeks after that, we're going to build the shop. Now, we're going with a 30 by 40 shop, which I am super, super excited about. I've never had a shop larger than 190 square foot, which is this shop right here. So this will be an absolute monster of a shop. It's a dream shop for me. I'm excited to finally be at the process of building the shop that I want, setting it up how I want, buying big machinery. I already picked up a radial arm saw, an antique radial arm saw that I'm excited to restore and get that in the shop. I never had the space for one, but I've always wanted one. So that's where we're going. I'm still gonna be putting out beginner content, especially considering all the emails I've gotten with everybody that could really use some insight and input. I'm still gonna be putting out a good bit of beginner woodworker in, I'm still gonna be putting out a good bit of beginner woodworking type videos to help out as many people as I possibly can. I'm also gonna be recording my custom work side of it just to, you know, help pull people out of the plateau of beginner and into intermediate. I can't really get you to professional level because I don't consider myself a master craftsman 
at all. But I can get you to where you're making money. And making really good, really good money. If you're new to the channel and you want something organized, this ain't the right channel for you. But if you like the content, like and subscribe. Hit that notification icon. I really appreciate the support in every way I can get it. Bear with me stumbling over my words. Go check out my website, free plans. I still got to make some plans. I got a couple ideas I'm jumbling around in my head, but I kind of have that deal where I test the market first. I, I, I built some stuff and posted it and didn't do well at all. So I didn't make plans for those, but I am coming out with new stuff. It's just, it's going to be a little bit of a process with all the stuff that I have going on. So stay tuned for all that. We got a shop build coming up. I'm going to be doing some business insight videos coming up and we're still going to be putting out beginner content. Thank you for the support. I will catch you on the next one.